Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to thank Quest. It was your idea to be the first, first guest in the history of uh, talk shows to sing his way on. That's it. It's, it's a good your, idea. I like entrance music. Your walk-on music. You're the first I, guest to sing the walk-on music. I made history. <laughs> thanks to you. And yeah. To you. <laughs> thank you, Roots. Oh God, you gosh. guys sound good. Yeah, that's so uh, nice. You feeling good? I don't need this really anymore. You don't, but you can do it if you want to. <laughs> you can curl it. Uh, thank you for coming on our show. It's the first time on our show. And you, you, you done nailed the intro already. I love your show. I have to tell you right now. Thank you, brother. I I'm so that. proud of you. Thank you. Because I've known you for years, for many years. On the SNL days, we parted and, and rocked. But I never knew that you had this side of you. And there are so many people that have tried. You know, legends of the stage and screen have tried and failed yeah. to do what you're doing, you know? No. And you do it so effortless, effortless, effortlessly. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for... But your chairs are really kind of lame. I don't like this. <laughs> This is what your chair no. forces me to I do. I hate to say this to you, but you are wrong. That's how people sit. And then, <laughs> and then if, if I do sit normal, then it creates a double chin. No, 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 no. I'm not fat. You are so it's wrong. Your chair creates this a double chin. This is how chin. people sit, and apparently... <laughs> this is how people sit, and this is what... I mean, we should get, like, commander chairs, right? It's also like I'm way in front of you. It forces me to, like, be like... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Curl up. Do a little Carol King album cover. Yeah. A little cat over there by the windowsill. What's up, my man? How you doing, man? Uh, we did some funny stuff on Saturday Night Live. I, I gotta yeah. say, you, I mean, you're never not funny. Well, no. Anytime I see you and you're just always scoring, you're just one of the funniest two guys. Yes, too kind. Thanks, and do you, man. We did, a, a, we did one, remember the High Times? And yeah, High Times, written by your announcer, Mr. Steve, Steve Higgins. Higgins. That's right. High Times sketch. He did the uh, High Times, uh, it was it. We were like, Mr. Steve Higgins, is he even there? Where is he? He's, he's, going, like, he's getting high right now. He's at <laughs> 427. <laughs> we got to a, a pre-tape of him going, oh, oh, way oh, that okay, guy. Good, good. You have a puppet play him for the rest of the show. <laughs> These hours are good here. Uh, but no, he, he, he wrote a bit where you were an investigative reporter yeah. for High Times Magazine. Yeah, yeah. And you would just get just so stoned. You would... <laughs> Just yeah, they were all really stony, paranoid ideas of what was happening in the government. Yeah. But it turned out to be true stories. Yeah, at the end, yeah. And, and uh, it got nominated for a Stony. Did you know that? I know, yeah. Yeah. I I've, was... been, I've been honored a few times by the Stonies. Have you accepted a few Stonies? I've never been to accept, but uh, yeah. Via sat? I hope they still, they still consider me a, a Stony. A, Absolutely. A Stony God of Candidate, some kind. Yeah. You should. Uh, we, we got to perform together quickly. I'll never forget this night. I don't know if you remember this. Of I, course I do. When you called me and you said, will you rock with me? You were, you were playing. You were opening for The Strokes yeah. at Roseland. It is true. And uh, I love The Strokes. They and were phenomenal. They were the best. And they got a new record coming out. Yes. Yeah. And, you, and we went up. And you wanted to sing Feed the World? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Do they know it's Christmas? Yeah. It was like Feed the, the British world answer to Michael Jackson's... Uh, we are the world. We are the world. Yeah. Feed the world. They're like, we're, we're also oh, no, the world. No, I'm not world. sure. Who came first? <laughs> I think we're, Oh, you know what? I, but the thing is... I don't know who came first. Um, we rocked it. Yeah. Well, here's what's great. What's great about it is uh, what I loved about it because I was on. It's, we're on stage. We're in Juicy Couture sweatsuits, <laughs> and uh, we were opening up for the Strokes just because they were like, "Why not? Let's let this guy be an idiot and yeah. open up in front of us." So we're jamming out, and Mark Ronson's on bass, Justin Stanley on drums, Gerard Bradford on the other guitar, and we're hanging out. And we we knew that you were going to come out, but the audience didn't know. Yeah. And it's Julie. Know it's Christmas, and it's you know a really nice, beautiful song. Yeah. But when you sing it. 
you make it your own. And I didn't realize that the first line that you came out is, and the Christmas bells that, that ring there are the clanging chimes of doom. It's a very evil <laughs> lyric. That's the actual... <laughs> yeah, and so I brought the doom and the, and the death metal we to We have a clip lyric. of it. It's a home video, but... Oh, really? Yeah, we do have a clip. Can I see? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, no, man. Do you miss the fun. rocking a little bit, getting out there on the road with a band and rocking the lands? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. But uh, it's fun. We have the one and only legendary Roots crew. It's true. You but, get I mean, to rock You get to night. rock out Dio a couple of seconds ago. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, they're the greatest. I mean, uh, I love those dudes. Uh, they know how to rock out pretty hard. Definitely the best on television. You are still rocking. Do you guys? Do I, is, you guys are so awesome. I, I wonder sometimes when you when you signed up for this show, if you were like, we're gonna say, well, you don't have time to like tour with your albums anymore, right? I they mean, do. Like, not as much. Though. You 14, still fourteen weeks out the year. You squeeze it in. We squeeze it in. Yeah, yeah. like I would say, two weeks ago, weren't you in like Amsterdam or something? Uh, yeah, we were in Europe. I mean, yeah. they go to Europe, I, I'm taking a nap, and they go to Europe. <laughs> but I have to say, you picking The Roots to be your band was the master stroke. Because oh, the, yeah, it, just, it, takes, it takes a show to another level. It really does. And it just makes it more fun, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Do you still, you, congratulations, you have two kids. I do have two boys now, yeah, two little boys. so cute, man. You still rock it out? It was nothing. I just, you know, it comes natural. <laughs> no, man. I made some babies. No biggie. Uh, yeah, I got two boys. and um, How old? Uh, two and four years old. Congrats. So Sammy's old enough. I take him to movies nowadays. And What do you see? And do you see just the what? cartoons? Well, I took him to see uh, uh, Toy Story 3. <gasps> Which was, uh, I think I it was it. the best movie of the year, which is weird was, to say. Dude, right? Because it's a cartoon. Did you freak out? But uh, I was, I cried thrice. <laughs> dude, I lost it in that movie. I was having a hard time because when they're going down towards like the melting pot, the flames, and like the toys reach over and hold each other's hand because they're like, we're going to perish now. I was like, it, it resonated deeply because I was like, that's all of us. We're all going to perish. And I was, I started to uncontrollably just like, and I was like, my, my boy is watching this. I have to see if he's okay. He couldn't have cared less. He was just like eating popcorn. Yeah. It was for me. It wasn't for the kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I started bawling like the first five minutes or something. Yeah. He's packing for college. Oh, and man. And I was just like, but, but you got those 3D glasses. Yeah. So you kind of hide your tears. <laughs> That's the best thing about the 3D kinda glasses. Like, everyone's like Roy Orbison <laughs> sitting around. <laughs> Yeah, it was just a crying no one's you. Yeah. It's, it's just your mouth that you have to cover up. Man. And then when he comes around the corner and he's giving the toys to the little, the little girl. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, hey, no, not, you're not wearing glasses, my man. Oh, my God. Good cover up. Good cover up. Swallow it. Swallow your feelings. Yeah, no problem. And swallow your feelings. Uh, hey, uh, speaking of moving movies, uh, yeah. Gulliver's Travels. Yeah. Got some heart to it as That's well. That's my jam, yeah. Dude, congratulations. Thank you, Kansa. That's a 3D spectacular. Mm. You play a giant. Mm. You actually play a normal man. It's a classic. Normal size man. It's a classic of, uh, of literature. It's a 300-year-old book, and it, it's still powerfully funny and yeah. one of my favorite books. And, and uh, we, we upgraded it a bit. Not, I don't think upgrade is the right word. We modernized it. You know, now it's... You fight a robot at the end. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's there it. is a robot battle. <laughs> but, I think you know. a little update. <laughs> and it's 300 years ago. in modern New York City. I'm like a schlubby dude working out in the mail room in a New York newspaper. Yeah. And uh, I, I finally get a, an opportunity to become a big time travel writer. Yeah. All I have to do is go to the Bermuda Triangle, write a little article about, about Bermuda and cool how beautiful island. it is. Is. Unfortunately, of course, I get sucked into a vortex. interdimensional vortex <laughs> and wake up on a crazy stony island of tiny people yeah. that are covering me and have enslaved me. But then I become their hero and their god. Yeah, which is which is phenomenal because you're, yeah. you're very peaceful. Which yeah, is like, I like that part of the movie a lot because you go like, 
Uh, hey guys, I don't want to fight you. Like, there's a, a bunch of ships, like 30 ships trying to yeah. attack you. Like, hey, let's yeah. just act like you're scared. <laughs> and then you guys go away and I want to fight. And they're like, and they all start shooting cannons at you. You're like, yes. no, I, guys, I didn't, I didn't want this at all. Yes. You're, the, you're kind of a peaceful giant, but the, and then you steer them in the right direction. Exactly. It's all well, done. Well, those in a are good the bad way. guys, the little guys. There's the good ones, the Lilliputians. Yeah. And then there's the bad ones, the Blafutians, <laughs> that I have to, you know, I have to protect my Lilliputians from the wrath of the Blafutians. Yes. And, um, yeah, it's really funny and and, uh, well, and crazy, they, it, but like like I said, it's got hot, and then before you know it, this happens. Wait, 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 and wait, wait, you're glad wait, wait. you got the glasses to protect you. Yeah, but it's very. <laughs> the, the one thing I like about it too is you you come on this island and they kind of don't know anything about your world, so you can. Yeah. I, I love you start putting on plays, and you're like, I wrote this play, and it's Titanic. <laughs> and I, they're like, they don't know. They're all crying. They don't know. And then well, you're like, yeah, that's the thing. And they I, think I, you're Jack Bauer at one point. I mean, uh, it's yes. really funny. And I wrote all the Prince songs. And yes. <laughs> it's very, very fun. We have a clip of uh, Gulliver's Travels. Here's Jack Black, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Gulliver's Travels is in theaters everywhere. Christmas Day. More with Jack Black when we come back, you guys.